Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Market Psychology 101, where we practice conditioning our minds to find value where there's fear and to be cautious, where there's greed. If you find any of what I say to be helpful, please like and subscribe. Something I realize is that I've talked about the Bitcoin rainbow chart a few times, and I have not shown you the Bitcoin rainbow chart as of yet. And so this is a Bitcoin rainbow chart on blockchaincenter.net. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. On my computer, this page is a little touchy. But yeah, shout out to blockchaincenter.net. And basically what this shows is the logarithmic regression, also diminishing returns of Bitcoin the further we go on. That Bitcoin back here, what was the price? A dollar? And at the peak, something like $20, 20x. We're looking at the black square at the top, $12 to 940 At the halving, $650 to 19000 8000 to 56000 So most recently a 7x. And after each having, this was about a year, a year and a half, one year. After each having, when we saw the top of Bitcoin during that bull market. Now, something I've seen a lot in the crypto community is people are really obsessed with patterns and believing that each time we have one of these four-year cycles, after the having, that things are going to play out relatively the same. That we're going to go from basically fire sale zones to maximum bubble territory. I'm just using their terminology up here. Having buy zone to bubble territory, accumulate zone, so on and so forth. And something that is interesting, back here, maximum bubble territory. We got above maximum bubble territory. Maximum bubble territory and seriously, seriously sell is where it got. During each having, basically a fire sale. Here's in the second one up, buy. Here we were in the third one up, accumulate. So when we reach a having, if we believe in patterns, are we going to be in the still cheap zone? That light green box between 52 and 68,000? Who knows? If I had to guess, I would assume we would go down to uh, the buy zone, somewhere around 30,000, if I had to guess. And who knows? This is going to be... April of next year when we have the halving. So again, blockchaincenter.net. And this is a Bitcoin rainbow chart if you want to Google and search for that. Here at Market Psychology, we look to be cautious where there is greed. And there is greed in the markets right now. If you're the look on the feed greer at feed versus greed index, we are in a greed zone right now. We haven't quite made it to Christmas, so I do not doubt that maybe we get to extreme greed before working our way back down. Not too long ago, in stocks and crypto, we were in a fear zone, and then it flipped. It was sometime around October to early November, we flipped. We went from touching extreme fear, and we're already in greed. And so I'm wondering if we're going to get to extreme greed before selling off. We are at yearly highs, so I'm being cautious. And guys, I'm not saying that, you know, Bitcoin can't just continue to go up and that we don't go down from here. But for me, the time to buy is when we're within 10% of a yearly low, if it's something you like. So from those tops, I wouldn't have bought up here. But as we reach 10% of yearly lows, you could have been buying over here when it sold off into the 30,000 range. That's when I would have first started buying the 21,000 range and the 16,000 range. A lot of people were buying here in the 20,000 range. This FTX sell off, that was pretty brutal, but they've nearly two extra profits. I know a lot of people were unhappy when we sold off, but we're already at 38. $40,000, 40, 
So people have nearly 2x their profits. Okay. That's not bad. And even if you would have bought earlier around this 30,000 zone, you've made 30%. That's not bad either. So we will see. If we take a look at the five-year time frame, you notice we are in the overbought zone, which we don't hit too many times. We're currently in the overbought zone on the relative strength index. This is on five-year. Most recently, we were overbought or touching overbought at the peaks of the last bull cycle. Before that, <coughs> excuse me, we are a little bit overbought. We double peaked here in the false rally of 2019. And before that, we were very overbought on our way up to the peak of 2017 at the end of the year. See this double peak here? I'm guessing, this is my opinion, that we're going to experience something similar like this where we get overbought and then we kind of sell off for maybe a year. That's my guess that maybe we're going to peak, come down, peak again, possibly get somewhere up to 46,000 and then spend some time. If a recession is to hit, then we would spend some time coming down. And if we take a look at volume based support and resistance, then maybe we come down to the 25,000, 19,000 levels. Now guys, a lot of uh, YouTubers who are bearish on the market, they'll show you these charts and give you the impression that it's going to come down here. They'll compare to other assets and stocks that, hey, look at this thing. It went down in price. There is no guarantee that we're going to come down here. And even if we do come down here, there is no guarantee that we are getting down here. So I'll tell you right now, if we do hit this 25,000 level where there's volume-based support, me personally, I'm going to be buying. And if we get down here, I'm going to start buying more. And if we get down, who knows, even further, where would the next area be? 10K, some people used to call it. I am going to be buying a lot more. But there is no guarantee we're going to get down here. We might not even get back below 30. We'll see. I don't want to get too much into the prediction game. Guys, I think timing the market, making predictions is a dangerous game to play. I think it's more important that you ask yourself, is this a product I like? Is this a product I use or will potentially use and like? And what do the technicals look like? One of my technical thresholds is to be near yearly lows. You do not have to have the same threshold. You can look at different indicators. Let's take this indicator off. If you want to look very macro, Pi cycle Bitcoin high low by no credits left, 1337. If you want to be very macro, here's the average. We're a bit above that. So on average, we would get back down there somewhere around 30,000. But it's very rare in all Bitcoin that we get above that white line. When we do, that signals a mega bull run. Now here, it was a fake out, and then we went back down. So maybe here, let's look at the bottom. June, middle of June, middle of July. Maybe wait a month to confirm to see if it's going to go back down or stay up. You know, here it kind of went back down and kept going up. Um, but you can see the pie cycle, the pie cycle high called it, pie cycle low called the bottom. Pie cycle high called the top, pie cycle low. Didn't quite call the bottom, but not a bad area to buy. 20,000, guys, 20,000, 16,000, 17,000. What's the difference? You know, who cares? <laughs> At that point, if we're converting 20,000 to 80, 90,000, we're four or five Xing our money, if not more, who cares? You know, sure, everyone wishes they bought the bottom, but if I ended up buying something at 20,000 or at 20 instead of 16 and eventually got up to 100, I'm not gonna care. 
he, he take those profits any day of the week. So anyways, this is just something I've been thinking about with Bitcoin. We do have the halving coming up in April of 24, which is right here. Let's draw a line. Let's draw a vertical line around April of 24. So I'm going to be watching this. What is, what is Bitcoin price going to do? Where is it going to be on the halving? Are we already going to be experiencing sell-offs for a possible recession? Are we going to keep going up? A chart I will show you guys sometime soon. If you look at seasonality during an election year, typically, most years, we dip around March. During election years, we dip around May, which is interesting because it's right after the halving. Might the halving during an election year signal the bottom? Let's go back to the rainbow chart. Halving, 2012. Dang near sing signaled a bottom. 2016, pretty much signaled a bottom. Sure, we want 650 to 513. What's the difference? Here, 8,800. I mean, really, that, that was the bottom. Yeah, we had the COVID crash right below. But maybe now is the time that we can slowly accumulate. I just find it... I mean, personally, I'm being cautious because, as I said, I like to buy when things are within a year of the low. But, hey, if you like Bitcoin, you believe in Bitcoin, then you make your own decision. But that's why it helps to spend more time in the markets than to purely try to time the markets. So the more you watch something that you like, whether it's a stock or crypto, the more you will find opportunities when it dips, hits the 200-day moving average, any of those things, the more you will find those opportunities. Let's take a look at one more indicator. The 10, 20 MA crossover with Heikinashi signals. Let's go to the yearly. When it has green dots, it shows us it's time to buy. Let's take a look at the monthly. When was the last buy signal on the monthly? So most recently, over here, that was the last buy signal. And then over here, 15 to 22, 27 to 34. How about the weekly? When was the last buy or sell signal? Over here when it was 26,000. So this indicator isn't the worst one to use. What's interesting, we haven't gotten any sell signals here. Yeah, I could put on the daily, but look at this our RSI. It's peaked right now. I'm wondering if we're going to get a sell signal soon and what that's going to turn into. Are we going to get some sell, buy, sell, buy, where we're just accumulating and then shooting up? Sell, buy, shoot up, where it just kind of happens over and over? Or is it going to take a while? I mean, look at this. From July to September, two months. Are we going to have to wait September, October, November? We've already waited two months on the weekly. We haven't gotten a signal yet. So I assume a signal is coming soon. If you look at these candles, they're getting skinnier and they're showing more volume to the downside. So might we be peaking? We'll see. Something to keep an eye on, guys. I hope these indicators give you a few extra tools in your tool belt. Don't just base my opinion, but don't base your investment decisions off one thing alone. And the more you have to look at and to research, the more informed your decision will be. You know, but it, you also have to be careful you don't overthink it either. I mean, think of a March Madness bracket. <laughs> Some people win it because they, they just like the feel of something or how it looks, you know, so... Not telling you not to trust your gut, and I'm also not telling you to not over or to overthink things either. Do what works for you. Spend more time in the market. Do your research. 
But anyways, let's close this out. As always, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a trader. Everything I say is just my opinion. And here with Market Psychology 101, we try to use psychology of the markets to our advantage to find value where there is greed and to be cautious where or to be cautious where there's greed and to find value where there's fear. I almost said that the wrong way. Yeah, guys, to find value where there's green, you know, we're going to buy tops and sell bottoms. Obviously joking. Uh, but for real, we're trying to look at macroeconomic conditions so we can feel safer about our investments, make smarter choices, and of course, never invest more money than you are willing to lose. Hope you enjoyed today's video. You guys have a great day.